we are recording so take welcome it everybody <laughs> hello and welcome to uh, cheese and wine 101 uh, with me patrick mcguigan and lydia will introduce herself in a moment um just to to let you know this is the british cheese weekend and i'm one of the the founders of, of the weekend um and the idea is is to promote small artisan british cheese makers who are having a really tough time with it at the moment um they've lost anywhere up to 85 percent of their sales overnight uh, when the restaurants closed uh, and so we all need to just be buying really good british cheese um it's a bit of a win-win really because you get to sort of help a brilliant sort of small family businesses and an industry that's really um blossomed over the past 40 years and at the same time you get amazing delicious cheese delivered to your door or you know you can you can order online there's lots of links on the the academy of cheese website um so i'm patrick mcguigan i'm the founder of the festival uh with tracy collie at the academy and um i'm also a cheese writer i write for the telegraph and the ft and delicious um, and we've done quite a few talks lydia and i down the years so i'll let lydia harrison introduce herself yeah, hi everybody. So I'm Lydia Harrison. I'm a master of wine and an educator at WCT School uh, in London, which and I organise tasting events there. So yes, me and Patrick um, have collaborated with the Academy of Cheese that do um, you know tandem qualifications to what we do in wine. So it's, it was a really natural uh, pairing. We do WCT qualifications in wine, spirits, uh, and sake. It's the Wine and Spirit Education Trust. Um, and the Academy of Cheese do cheese qualifications. So we started doing some tasting events together, um, looking at all sorts of crazy topics, haven't we? Drunken cheeses. Uh, that was fun. What, I can't remember much about that one. <laughs> yeah. What grows together, goes together, things like that. So um, we, did a good, we did a very good one on terroir, which I really yeah. enjoyed doing. That was a really good one looking at terroir in wine, obviously, but also in cheese. Yeah, that lots was, of crossovers. Lots of crossovers between cheese and wine. So, um, so and, yeah, it's been Lydia's, a natural Lydia, pairing. Lydia, you're really quite competitive, aren't you? So you always <laughs> want the wine to taste better than the cheese. Um, so, <laughs> and, and actually most of the time, seeing as you're a master of wine, you, you have the upper hand, I think. But there's been a few times where the cheese has, has won out, hasn't there? Yeah, and then it's about cheese. The, the purpose of this is to showcase cheese. So Patrick's going to take it away with the cheese and I'll just... I'll just do some supporting little, little <laughs> shouts um, about what you're drinking. Well, let's, we've got quite a lot to get through, so let's get cracking. There's yeah. some brilliant, I'm just looking at the, the group chat, there's some amazing um, cheeses uh, that people are eating. I mean, Lincolnshire Poacher, Simon Cable's drinking, uh, drinking, eating, Lincoln <laughs> Poacher, uh, uh, Cachiel Blue from Ireland, uh, great cheese, Capricorn Goat's Cheese, and some French Camembert. We'll allow that, Simon. I mean, it's meant to all be British, but, um, you know. <laughs> Chuck we, him out. we love cheese in all its forms, really. And Isle of Mole uh, cheddar from Lindsay, which is another terrific cheese. Quite a punchy cheddar, that. Um, so what, we, what we're doing today, we, it's quite, we've only got half an hour, so we're going to sort of keep it fairly basic um, with four wines and four cheeses. I mean, this is a common occurrence for me. You're in my office at the moment in Brighton. This is the cheese shed. I work at the bottom of my garden in a shed. And so four bottles of wine at uh, half past five is a pretty natural occurrence uh, for me when I'm working. Helps me, helps me write. Um, so we're gonna start with, I mean, red wine is the, the thing that most people reach for uh, when they think of cheese. But actually, I find red wine often can be quite a difficult match. The tannins often clash with creamy cheeses like Brie's and goat's cheeses. So white wines work really well and fizz particularly. So we're gonna start with some sparkling wine uh, and a goat's cheese. Uh, the cheese that I've got, I mean, you know, join in, ask questions, tell me what you're eating. And if you've got any questions about, you know, what you'd want to match with your cheese, then uh, go for it. But the, the cheese that we're trying first up, but I'm trying is called Driftwood. And if you can see that, this is uh, made by White Lake in Somerset. Uh, it's a goat log and you can see it's got this beautiful sort of wrinkly rind. Can you see that? That's a particular type of yeast called Geotrichum. Um, and they, they, it, the dark colour is from ash, so they sprinkle ash on the cheese, which changes the acidity and encourages this yeast to grow. And then you start to get this lovely sort of breakdown. You can see that sort of ring under, underneath the rind. Um, that's the, the yeast working on the cheese and breaking it down. And you know, people always ask, when do you eat the rind? Definitely with this kind of cheese, um, because underneath that, you'll get lots of really intense flavours, quite sort of herbaceous 
notes and aromatic notes often. Um, so we've, uh, I've, I've paired it, well, as, as well as the wine, I've, I've gone a bit fancy with fancy crackers and sourdough crisp breads. I've got a pink peppercorn sourdough crisp bread from Peter's Yard, which has some nice spice. Often goat's cheeses can have a bit of spice in them, a slight pepperiness. And this pink peppercorn works really nicely with it. Um, I mean, it's kind of mixing up flavours, but I think it will work with the with the wine. Um, Lydia, if you want to talk about what you've uh, what you what you're drinking. Yeah, so I chose um, as it was British Cheese Weekender a British uh, sparkling wine. This is from Hampshire. They've got a great vineyard that's sort of south facing um, with lots of kind of chalky flinty soil. So really similar to to Champagne. Um, and the great thing about sparkling wines is they're really high in acidity. What, what makes your mouth water, what makes it salivate? Um, because, because you pick the grapes sort of just ripe, uh, and especially in the cool climate of England. Um, and so they're really refreshing, and this should work really well with cheese. And I think a lot of people don't think of sparkling wine with cheese. You always have it as an aperitif. But um, that acidity is really good with creamy cheeses like goat cheese because it will just cleanse the palate, uh, wash away the sort of the fat after the cheese. Um, so yeah, it makes a really, really natural pairing. Um, but you don't have to have British part in, you know, champagne, carver, anything like that would also work or, you know, high acid white wines um, work. And this is a, a Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Pinot Mernier blend. So just like champagne and the Chardonnay is dominant and it has the really lovely kind of citrus, uh, lemon uh, peel, and then those uh, toasty kind of autolytic characters uh, from the lees aging, things like kind of bread and pastry and I think that just kind of complements the, the flavours that you were talking about in the in the goat's cheese. Goat, goat's, goat's cheese is often these sort of uh, uh, these sort of yeast ripened, um, mould ripened goat's cheeses can be very sort of rich, they really coat your mouth, you know they've, they've got a lovely kind of um, creaminess but also they have acidity, goat's cheeses will have acidity. The way they make them is they add uh, starter cultures to the milk and then leave those starter cultures to acidify the milk over a long period. So you're talking sort of 18, 20 hours sometimes. So these ghost cheeses always have acidity as well. So they're quite balanced in themselves, but they do kind of coat the mouth. So I think sparkling wine is, we did a whole night, didn't we, of, of fizz, Lydia? Yeah. And it was, a I mean, it was amazing. Sparkling wine works with so many cheeses. People are asking, um, we have Baron Bygod and Ogle Shield. Yeah, oh I wasn't sure what Ogle Shield was. You'll have the to tell me. Baron Bygod is a, is a Brie style cheese. Yeah, I need that one. Milk in Suffolk, which is, um, so I think sparkling wine would work beautifully with mm. Bygod. Um, and, and we're Brie coming style. on to soft next, aren't we, as well, so we can talk about um, yeah. with the Elmhurst. Yeah, we've got a, we've got a kind of a, a, a Brie style, a bloomy rinded cheese next, which would work with this wine just as well. Ogle Shield's washed rind, so it's quite funky on the outside. It's got a bit of a pungent kick to it. It smells a bit like yeah farmyardy is a nice way of putting it um and i'm not sure that the, the the sparkling wines would work with that although you know listen i'm always up for just trying stuff just try it and see and see see if you like it because i was thinking about what makes a good pairing earlier and and i sort of i sort of break it down into three categories when i'm pairing cheese with drinks whether that's wine or beer or cider or sake or um, gin, or I mean, last night I had vermouth and sherry on the go with cheese. But there's it's sort of always break down into three pairings. One is there's a complementary element. So if you have, uh, say, a goat's cheese with a honeyed flavour, and you have a wine with a honeyed flavour, then those they sort of am amplify those two flavours and they just sort of dovetail together really nicely. But sometimes there's the opposite of that, which is the sort of the contrast. So you know, you have something like a, a Stilton with a, a sweet wine, you've got a very salty cheese with something very sweet, then that, they sort of stand up to each other and that contrast works really well. And then the third category is like the total curveball, where for, you don't expect it to work, but it does. So like I did green tea and goat's cheese. So a, a goat's cheese like this with green tea is just amazing because you have those sort of aromatic sort of minerally notes in the green tea that were that similar to to, um, to the goat's cheese, but you just wouldn't, you wouldn't expect it. I also did goat's cheese with chocolate brownie once, which was amazing. <laughs> it was absolutely, I mean, it was a really good chocolate brownie from, um, it was like 7% chocolate, but um, 
So I always think those three work together. And, and what you're looking for is you're looking for a really good wine and a really good cheese. And when you put them together, they are sort of elevated. It takes both the wine and the cheese up to Nirvana levels. That's what I'm looking for. That's sort of cheese and wine Nirvana. Um, and it doesn't always work. Sometimes they're just nice together, but sometimes something magical happens and it's just, just a really beautiful match. Um, and that's sometimes you get you get almost like a third flavor. Ned Palmer was talking about this last night. Is you, you can put two things together and end up with a flavor that is not in either of them. But, but, but when you have them together, they kind of they create a third flavor. Um, and Ned Palmer was talking about that in his talk last night, which I thought was really interesting. Um, Tracy Colley's asking beer. Um, <laughs> I think we should move on, otherwise we, we, we'll just be still, you'll still be talking about goat's cheese at six o'clock. Yeah, okay, let's move on um, to the next. Let's and if you it. could stop mentioning things like tea, okay, we're here to talk about wine. Yeah, well, cheese. Tracy's on the beer, so yeah. I don't know what's going on there. Just, she's just going to remind you. Cheese and she's, wine. I think she's in, having a barbecue in the background. Just to let you know, <laughs> I, I didn't have that one. I had a Cremant de Loire, which was is delicious. It has, it's got Chenin, uh, Chenin Blanc in it, which is, has some nice honey notes, I thought, which worked really well. Um, right, next cheese, uh, Elmhurst. You can see this big block of uh, lovely cheese. It's quite young, this Elmhurst. If you leave it longer, it gets really gooey. But you can see there's a bit of a breakdown going on underneath the rind. So the last cheese was a yeast called, Pen um, was called Geotrichum that was doing that. With these kind of white brie and camembert style cheese, it's penicillin camemberti that's doing a similar job so it tends to break these down much quicker uh, and gives you more sort of vegetal notes but elmhurst is from uh, sharpen who are based um, uh, down in the west country they have an estate uh, sort of 500 acre estate where they make wine and they make cheese um, and it's a really beautiful beautiful uh, part of the country near the top nest um, and this Elmhurst is a triple cream cheese. So you might know Briat Savarin and um, Vignot is another one from France. It's triple cream because they actually add cream to the milk. So they'll add double cream. So you've got the cream in the milk and then you add double cream to make it triple cream. So very rich, but underneath that rind, you should be getting some, uh, uh, and you find this with Bries and Camembert, sort of, you often get brassica notes like cabbage and, um, uh, uh, broccoli sometimes, uh, not broccoli, uh, cauliflower, sorry, uh, but also mushrooms, uh, truffle, that kind of thing going on. Um, so what are we, what are we pairing it with, Lydia? Yeah, so this is um, a, a really rich soft cheese, isn't it? And someone else talking about Baron Brie, good, like, you know, if you had a Brie or Camembert or whatever else you had, I think would be kind of similar style. Um, and we were actually pairing this with uh, Sharpham's white wine because they, they make cheese and they make wine. Um, so, you know, and they've got some natural uh, pairings. Again, like with the, the sparkling, it's going to have really nice uh, acidity. This is, so this is the, the bottle here. Uh, and it's actually a great writer called Madeleine Angevin that does, um, it's quite popular in Germany um, because it's an early ripening grape. So it's good for, for cool climate places like the UK. So again, it's got lots of fresh acidity. This has been barrel fermented. So that will add um, some flavors from the wood, uh, just like you do have barrel aged fetters and things as well. Um, so it has a kind of smoky toasty note. Um, but and I think any white wine um, that's got really good acidity and some flavour, because I think um, what you have here is it's quite rich and quite dense and the texture of the cheese is really intense. And when we talk about wine, we talk about the body and the mouthfeel. Um, and it's, if it has some flavour concentration and and this one has some oak aging, it gives more layers to the, the texture of the wine as well. So I think that's another element that can complement the cheese is, is, is you know, the body of the wine and the, the texture of the cheese being kind of aligned as well. So the acidity of this is really nice and helps to cut through that, that cream. This is not a sort of you know, low, low calorie pairing, um, but also the, the flavor intensity and the texture of the wine I think works, works quite well. Um, and we've actually got the exact same wine and cheese for this, haven't we? Because um, we, we got them both from Sharpen. So what do you That's think? Fine. I think I've just tasted the wine and it, um, yeah, it really sort of, it sort of mellows some of the oak flavors in the wine and brings out some of the fruit when you have it together. But the, it, it, you've got in that, I think, sort of contrast and complement at the mm. same time, because you've got the acidity cutting through the richness, which I suppose yeah. is a 
kind of a contrast. But then that barrel aging is really sort of makes it richer and rounder somehow, which then sort of dovetails in with the really rich cheese. That's a really good match. I'm liking yeah, I that really like quite it. a lot. And actually, I got a more mushroomy notes. And talking about that third flavour thing, I, it sort of amplified the mushroom notes from the rind when I tasted that after the wine. So it sort of did, it changed the experience, which is, that's a good, that's a good match. Um, somebody's asking, how about a heavily oaked Chardonnay with buttery yeah. and toasty notes? Yeah, absolutely. Like I think, yeah, because that will have more texture as well and, and flavour. And, and the other thing you, um, I was going to talk about with the, with the next one is, is flavour intensity. So obviously you need to think about if you've got quite a delicate wine, you don't want a really strongly flavoured cheese that would overpower it. You kind of want them to be similar. So if you have got a quite you know, heavily oaked wine, then you need to, a cheese with a lot of flavour as well. And this, this does have that. I think it stands up nicely. And then you have the creaminess uh, of both and the sort of texture of both. I just on the slide that we've got up there that's the Sharpham estate so you can see it's absolutely like you can see the vineyards there it's all god's own country really that's i mean look at that <laughs> they also they also have their um have their own herd of jersey cows and actually if you look at this cheese can you see how golden that the the the, the color of the cheese is jersey cows give incredibly rich milk um and it has very high levels of beta carotene which gives the, the, so it gives the cheese that amazing kind of creaminess that it has a lot of butter fat in the milk. Um, but it also gives it that really golden color, which makes it just look delicious. And I tell you, if you left that Elmhurst for a little bit longer, leave it for another week or two, and that layer of goo will just progressively sort of go towards the center and you'll end up with a really, really intense gooey cheese. Um, it's it's a it's a cracker that I really enjoyed that match. That was a good one. Right, we're going um, halfway. We move on to yeah. Move on to the next one. We've got. This is excited. I'm excited. I've got like the biggest bit of cheddar. I'm going to be eating this a week. The size of my head. <laughs> but, um, Thank you. Look, if you see on the slide there, look, those are the Trafalgar boys, the Trafalgar brothers. Look at them, aren't they? A picture of <laughs> Somerset health and. Uh, vitality with a couple of massive uh, truckles of cheddar on their shoulders <laughs> I, I, I mean i would struggle with that because they're 25 kilos best part of 25 kilos those uh, those cheddars this this is pitchfork cheddar um and it's uh it's a terrific terrific cheese it's so different to the kind of block uh, supermarket cheddar it, you know i mean they're both called cheddar but they're completely different cheeses really this is how cheddar traditionally was made you know hundreds of years ago um, it, they make them in these 25 kilo truckles and then they wrap them, they bind them in cloth, in muslin uh, and mature them. Um, and you can see, you start to get, if you look on the slide, you can sort of see some of the mold and uh, growing on the outside. And when the cheese is ready, which with pitchfork is around sort of 12 months, they, they, you, you take the, the, the cloth off. But what that gives, that instead of the, the block supermarket cheddars are all wrapped in plastic as they age. So they still have that really, um, fudgy texture supermarket cheddars. Cathedral City is like, you know, you could you could put windows in with it. It's like putty. But this has got this is proper cheddar. And so from Somerset and it's got snap, you know, and that's what you're looking for for a good cheddar. You know, it kind of it breaks. Um, it's made with raw milk. Uh, they're based uh, near Western Supermare. Um, and they've they're best known actually Trefarans for their Kafili, Gore with Kafili. So they were based in Wales and then they've moved uh, down to Somerset. And once they moved to this amazing farm with amazing milk, in they're about five miles from the village of Cheddar. They were like, well, we've got to make a Cheddar. So this only came out about two years ago. And it's exciting because there used to be hundreds and hundreds of farmhouse Cheddar makers in Somerset. Um, and now, well, for a long time, there were only three. I mean, we were sort of on our, you know, these are precious cheesemakers that we had to hold on to. So Montgomery's, Keynes and Westcombe. And then these guys have set up. And so we now have four farmhouse raw milk cheddar makers. There's also a cheddar maker in uh, cheddar itself called Cheddar Gorge, but they don't keep their own animals. So these are precious cheeses. Um, and this, is, this came fourth in the World Cheese Awards last year. So this is the fourth best cheese in the world out of a field of 3,500 or something. Um, How many of those did you taste, Patrick? I probably did a couple of thousand. You know, <laughs> um, it, when you're judging in the World Cheese Awards, I'd probably get through 90 cheeses in a day. Wow. Um, 
yeah, it's it's quite psychedelic by the end. You're not quite <laughs> sure, you know, where you are. Um, anyway, it's 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 a classic cheddar, so it's savoury. It's not sweet, uh, and it's got lovely kind of, you know, every cheese is described as being nutty, but this really is nutty, and I would sort of say sort of hazelnut flavours, and it has that beautiful cheddar tang, acidity, um, which you know you want from cheddar, and that's. But how they make the, the cheese is they pile up the curds in a, in a process called cheddaring and the acidity rises as they do that and that's where you get that tang for cheddar now i'm going to stop talking about cheddar lydia <laughs> and tell us about wine yeah so um for this um uh, we've got a red wine which i think is a lot of people's go-to for for cheese and wine but um sometimes other people do struggle with with reds because red wines have tannin so when you taste a red wine the the, the drying sensation that you get around your teeth and your gums um, is, is, is a natural compound called tannin that's found in the skins of grapes. Uh, and because you use those skins in the making of red wine to give the color, um, you get this tannin um, compound on the, on the palate. And sometimes that can clash with some cheeses, um, really sort of umami uh, cheeses can, can accentuate the tannin. And for some people that are a bit more sensitive, it can then taste quite bitter and astringent and drying, and that's not always pleasant. Um, but the good thing about cheese is it contains salt um, and salt is the friend of, of, of wine. It's going to soften the tannins. It's going to bring out um, the fruit flavors, soften the acidity as well. So it just makes it feel smoother. So a really hard cheese like this, it's got lots of salt, um, but also flavor complexity. So I've got a, a Santamillion, which is a Bordeaux blend, mainly Merlot, but with some Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc in there as well. And it's had lots of oak aging. That's good because that will add flavor, but also soften the tannins um, and it's 2008 so again as red wines age those tannins soften out as well so having a, a slightly older um, red wine means those tannins are a little bit softer the salt in the cheese should make it softer too and then as well having all that flavor complexity in this rich red and, and the savory elements you get things like leather and tobacco uh, developing on older reds will also work I think with those kind of nutty savory uh, flavors that you were talking about and um, Patrick so yeah, I mean, I, I love hard cheese, so this would definitely be a, a go-to for me. Um, but equally, if you don't like red wine, you know, good flavoured white wine um, would also work. But again, you just need to make sure it's got some flavour concentration to kind of it, you know, stand up the cheddar. It works quite well with the with the um, the Sharpen uh, mm -hmm. barrel aged as well, because 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 Canico's asking she's she's actually eating uh, pitchfork cheddar right now and asking what white wine. Actually, yeah, I would say like a good white wine. Oak 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 oak. The one before the sharp and barrel. Yeah, really anything nice. sort of barrel fermented usually has more flavour and body. And I, I like those kind of oak flavour characteristics with quite nutty, uh, savoury cheeses. Um, mm, that's that's yeah. that's really good. I mean, the classic match with cheddar would be cider. You know, if you're down in the West Country, and that honestly, that is an absolute like fail safe match. Cheddar and cheddar and cider is just knockout. Um, but you know, red wine. I think red wine with these harder cheeses, so those kind of Alpine style cheeses as well. You yeah. know, the Gruyères and the Comte style cheeses work really well with red wine. Um, and I, I drink a lot of light reds with cheese, Lydia. You know, like some Pinot Noir and Gamay. Yep. You know, which are quite low on ABV, but they have acidity, don't they? And yeah, that definitely. Works quite well. Yeah, Beaujolais and Pinot Noir can be really good, especially in the summer. You know, a bit chilled um, and can work really well. Um, with a quite a range of cheeses as well if you're looking for just you know one wine for the for the board um but yeah if you do like witcher reds um it doesn't have to be santa million you know rioca any sort of oak aged mm. sort of full of styles i i i like with a, a a big flavor some hard cheese i think we should probably get i can't believe how quickly this is gone <laughs> i know I mean, normally we normally have we... two hours are we still over one <laughs> i know <laughs> Normally when we do these, you know, live and in person at the WSET school in Bermondsey, you know, it's an hour and a half, two hours, and we really, um, you know, have a lot more time to kind of chat to people. And But anyway, we'll crack on with the last cheese. The, um, the best cheese in the world, 2014, um, at the World Cheese Awards, and you're looking at it there. I actually took that photo. Um, I was there. I'm one of the judges at the World Cheese Awards, and this is Bath Blue. Um, I've got a nice little wedge of it here. Have you got this one as well, Lydia? Did you? Get I some? absolutely do. Yeah, I'm, really, I'm excited. I love a blue cheese. So this is uh, made by the Bath Soft Cheese Company, who are near Bath, obviously, in a, a little village called Kelston, um, and uh, it's 
essentially a kind of Stilton, but they can't call it Stilton because uh, they're not in, it, Stilton's a PDO protected cheese. So you can only make it in the three counties of um, Leicestershire, um, uh, I've gone completely blank, Leicestershire and, um, anyway, it will come to me. Um, but, so they can't call it Stilton, they call it Bath Blue. Uh, and it's, um, it's a really good cheese. They have, all, they have their own cows and it's an organic farm. And I think that makes a difference. The milk is, is really, has a kind of richness to it with the, I think organic cheeses often have a sort of layer of deliciousness that is something to do with these kind of sort of simpler and kinder farming practices. Um, it's, uh, so yeah, I mean, Stilton can be a very complex cheese. It can have a lot going on, mm. um, sort of spice and creaminess. You get sort of sometimes sort of little slightly metallic notes from the, the mold, which is, Penicillin Rock 40. Um, so there's a lot going on. And the classic blue cheese match in terms of wine is something sweet and sticky. Um, so what are, what are you drinking with your bar? Yeah, blue? so we, um, we, we talked about port, you know, could have other sweet wines. I, I am a big fan of port and blue cheese as well. Um, but we also went for another classic pairing, which is Sautern, which is uh, a sweet wine region in Bordeaux in France. Um, so yeah, it's got about 130 grams of sugar. So uh, it's, it's not that healthy, but yeah, it's what you said about sometimes you're looking for similar flavors and other times you kind of want that contrast. And this is like oh. salt, salt and sweet, you know, like salted caramel chocolate. Um, and the blue cheese is really salty and tangy. And the wine is the complete opposite. It's really sort of apricot jam, marmalade flavors, honey, really sweet um, sort of, you know, uh, candied oranges and it just works really well and again you've got that that flavor intensity you've got this really sort of full-bodied rich red with a pretty intense blue and you need to have a strong flavored wine or spirit to, to stand up to that that cheese don't you because you you know otherwise the cheese would just overwhelm what you were drinking you wouldn't really taste anything but here they really complement each other it really the wine kind of sort of wraps up the cheese in a kind of like a <laughs> duvet of of sweetness which is really nice yeah. It sort of just brings it all together. Yeah, and the, the cheese, I think, makes the wine even fruitier because that all the salty tanginess kind of just brings out even more that sort of really sweet marmalade notes. So, yeah, really sort of really contrasting them. Um, Leicestershire, Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire for Stilton. I went blank there, but I just got to get that in. That's <laughs> yeah, like, I can't help with that. That's basic cheese knowledge. Um, so... That I mean, we've run out of time. That went so quickly, and we don't want to. I don't want to trample on the next talk, which is um, uh, save Scottish cheeses with Selina Errington. Uh, sorry, Selina Cairns from Errington Cheese in Scotland, and she's with Edinburgh Cheese, talking about um, uh, that's Liz from Edinburgh Cheese talking about the kind of difficulties facing Scottish cheese makers, but also tasting through some amazing Scottish cheeses. So I think that's on the uh, Instagram Live. So switch over and learn a bit about Scottish cheeses. But thank you very much um, uh, for joining us. That's been really good fun, isn't it? Yeah, let me just quickly, um, in case you're interested, obviously we'll hopefully be doing some cheese and wine events again in person as soon as we can. But um, you have there all the details of Academy of Cheese for any of their qualifications, Patrick's details, my Instagram, and also the school where we're, we're still doing online wine courses, so you could still learn at this time. <laughs> There's talk of doing another one, isn't there, later in the month? Me and you, Lydia, is that right? Are we going to do it? Yes, a... yeah, so the school are also doing some virtual tasting. So if you're interested, um, you can sign up to our, our newsletter on the tasting and events page of the WSD school. And, and yeah, we're going to do another one, which maybe be an hour, so we can maybe cover a bit more. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. It'd be nice to have a bit more time. Yeah. Um, and I was going to say, if the Academy of Cheese, also you can do courses online um, so yep. you can actually study online in the same way that you can with WSET so um, go on to the academy site and look I mean I do training for the academy um, and I'm looking to sort of perhaps do some online stuff so have keep, keep your eyes open there's you know however long this lockdown goes on it's <laughs> quite good to expand your mind yeah. as, as, as we're all in, indoors yeah and experiment as well so uh, they've just said they had the pitch for it with the english sparkling and it's like we always say that don't we at the events is there's oh, yeah. no kind of you have to this has to work for you if you don't like sweet wine you know have something else with the blue or or just experiment and and try different wines different cheeses that's that's the fun bit and you don't have to like what everyone else likes you can no it, it annoys <laughs> me but i uh, really it really annoys me when people um sort of tell you what should work and you know yeah. this goes with that and 
because in my experience they're talking out the hat really because <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm constantly surprised at what works with cheese you know so it's that third that that kind of curveball match which you sort of you just don't expect it and then it's just worth it that's half the fun isn't it is sipping and nibbling and, sipping and, and seeing what happens really and wine works um, with everything so you know yeah, <laughs> not just yeah. cheese <laughs> it works really well with beer as well i find wine <laughs> yeah. oh, God, some like dodgy cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, speaking of dodgy cocktails, I've got four bottles of wine to work through now. So um, yeah, I hope you're not doing any more talks later on. Patrick. No, no more talks for me. Um, there's some great ones coming up there. There's Neil's Yard Dairy doing a tour of their maturing rooms. Uh, we've got uh, we've got cheese and cider at nine o'clock, which will be fun. Um, so and there's uh, I think Paxton's are doing something on busting the myths of cheese or that might have already gone but a lot of the talks will be up on the academy youtube site uh, so if you miss any of them go and check that out over the next few days and you can catch up it's been it's been absolutely i've learned loads um watching all these brilliant cheesemongers and cheesemakers um talking so eloquently about what they do it's been a, it's been great fun actually um anyway i might go and eat some cheese and drink some wine <laughs> yeah. now <laughs> I shall stop recording now but yeah thanks everyone for coming and um, I don't have to rush off so if anyone does want to pop a few questions in the chat or you, I'll, I'll let you unmute yourself if you want to, to ask anything else as well. Um.